Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm your host, William Marsh, and we're taking a look at Project Cars 2. We are about six months away from the release of Slightly Mad Studios' second title under the Bandai Namco banner, and we are wondering, will it make up for its predecessor's flaws? Can it redeem the series? Let's take a look. So in 2015, we saw the release of the highly controversial Project Cars Racing Simulation. This title was built up over years of crowdfunding and advertisements, and it left a lot of racers, myself included, rather disappointed. We felt that some promises were broken, we felt that some claims were unfulfilled, and we just felt like we were shipped an incomplete product. Now, fast forward two years, and it looks like Project Cars is going to be released this September. So looking at that, we are starting to see more previews, we're starting to see more footage, and some more things are coming through the news lines, and we have a little bit to be excited about. Now, a couple weeks ago, I actually got to attend one of these press media events in San Francisco, and there I got to spend a lot of time playing Project Cars because I actually worked through a third party at the simulator booth. I got to work with CXC simulations, and that required me testing and driving a lot of Project Cars too. So I spent about four hours driving the sim, preparing it for the media, preparing it for the press, and things like that. So I got a lot of time behind the wheel of the different cars and different modes that were promoted at that time. And I will say, I'm actually kind of optimistic I think there is a chance that Project Cars 2 can bring itself back. Don't get me wrong, there's still a long way to go, but I feel a lot more comfortable about Project Cars 2 now than I did, say, two, three months ago. Now at the event, three modes were teased. There was the ice racing mode, which saw a Mercedes-Benz C63 race around an ice track in Sweden. There was the GT3 race with the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT GT3 car racing around Fuji. And then there was the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT racing around Fuji in the live track conditions. Live track is one of the more promoted features for Project Cars 2. And it is essentially their version of real road or dynamic track where the track will dynamically evolve over the course of the race and we will see, say, water puddling up on the track. We'll possibly see mud getting flung up onto the circuit. And I think it's safe to assume that the tracks will rubber up as a race goes along. I got to test out the road car on the track during live track conditions. And when it did start raining, it really did change the way you had to drive the course you did have to really accommodate for the rain. You had to shift your braking points back further. You had to be more ginger on the throttle and in your steering inputs. And that was a good feeling. I will say the cars felt almost too planted in using the gas, but you could spin out. And also for the trial, we were required to put on traction control in the conditions so this could also explain why the car was a little too planted on the gas in the gt3 race on the other hand we had it running with no assists we had it set with the motion pro 2 simulator with the direct drive steering wheel the hydraulic pedals and this really brought it to life i think it could also be said a lot for the sim where you really had to stand on the brake. You really had to throw your weight onto the pedals to get the car wowed down. You had the unparalleled feeling of the direct drive wheel, and that really gave you that feeling that was as close to reality as you could get. Now, I don't know how well this will translate to consumer wheels and belt or gear drive, but with what I was able to test with, it was a great feeling. 
I've had a lot of complaints that people get a very floaty experience in Project Cars 1, and with Project Cars 2, it really did feel like that was done away with. It really did feel like the cars had a decent sense of weight to it. There might have been a couple moments where the car's weight shifted in a weird way for my liking, but all in all, it did feel like a noticeable step forward. While what I did get to experience of Project Cars 2 definitely left me optimistic, there is something to be said that I only got to test out three cars on two tracks. There is still a lot of Project Cars 2 that has remained to be seen, and I am hoping that the quality of the remaining content is on par with what I got to test. Time will tell, and hopefully we will have a positive answer when Project Cars 2 releases this September, hopefully. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on Project Cars 2. Do you think it can redeem itself after Project Cars 1 deemed to not really live up to our expectations? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and help keep us on track. Also, check out SimRacingPaddock.com, check out our new forums, and join the community. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.